Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about a spectrum analyzer for FPV. A couple of years ago, I came across an Arduino project online which someone made a spectrum analyzer for the 5.8 GHz band using Arduino program. And his codes eventually made it into this product here, which is the Diversity VRX from Quanon. And you can see in the menu, there's the spectrum analyzer there. And if you do a channel scan, it does work by scanning all the channels of the 5.8 GHz and it could identify the band that is the channel that is in use as you can see. But it's really a poor man's spectrum analyzer and it only works for the 5.8 GHz band for the channels. So my search continues for an affordable spectrum analyzer for FPV. Recently one of my friends recommended me to explore cheaper alternatives online such as using a software-defined radio. Here we're looking at the HAT RF1 development board. It's a software-defined radio which costs about 90 USD and is very popular. It supports up to 6 GHz on paper, but looking at the specs, you could see that the RF transceiver chip inside is a MAX2837, which supports only up to 2.7 GHz. Hence, I started googling for the keywords Chip Spectrum Analyzer and I found this interesting product here. It's a signal generator spectrum analyzer that costs about 79 USD and it can support up to 4.4 GHz. However, we need to measure 5.8 GHz, so this is not suitable for our usage. Anyway, I went to the forums to find out more information and here I found this close-up picture of the circuit board inside and that is a synthesizer chip circuit in red and that is none other than the ADF4350. I look up its data sheet online and indeed it can only support up to 4.4 GHz. I did not feel like giving up yet so I went online to continue my search and I found this NWT6800 Spectrum Analyzer. It's rated to support up to 6.8 GHz. However, it's a lot more expensive and it costs 293 USD. And in this shot, you could see that it uses N-type connectors, which makes it look similar like the professional equipment. As for the synthesizer chip, there's one in there circuit in red. And the close-up shot shows that it's none other than the Maxim 2870E. I went online to Google for its data sheet and it really could support up to 6 GHz. Fortunately, there is a cheaper clone that is similar to the NWT6800. And it's this spectrum analyzer here, which costs about 125 USD. So I went ahead and ordered one to see if it really works. After about three weeks, the package arrived and it consists of the synthesizer, the cables, and the software, which is a mini CD. Before testing this, let's strip it apart to make sure that it has the correct synthesizer chip that I mentioned. Well, after removing 8 screws, I'm able to slide out the circuit board and this is how it looks like. And I could find the synthesizer chip and indeed it is the Maxim 2870E. It's the same chip found in the expensive NWT6000 or NWT6800. So everything is good and now I could put the case back together. Well, to test the 6GHz simple spectrum analyzer, I have connected the input antenna here to the in port. There's nothing connected to the out port because we are not using the signal generator. And on the left, I have the FetchSharp Byte Frost HD FPV digital system. On the right, we have the DJI digital system, which is HD2. And at the far end there, we have the standard analog 5.8 GHz FPV transmitter. So it'll be interesting to see how the three systems compare to each other in the spectrum analyzer curves. Now let me fire up the program. So as you can see, there are two programs here on my desktop. The right one is WinNWT4. The left one is MWT4000 Win. Basically the one that comes with the CD provided with the spectrum analyzer is this one here. And I'm going to show you how it looks like. It looks a lot more sophisticated. However, when I test it initially, I realized that the spectrum analyzer frequency isn't very accurate. So I'm not going to use this one. 
Instead, I use the one that is downloaded on the website. This is the latest one. And if you download it and install on Win XP, you will see all the fonts in German. However, if you install it on Windows 10, like so, it's translated to English. Here I've set up the startup frequency to 25 MHz and the stop at 6 GHz. That is the full range of this spectrum analyzer. And now let's do a scan, a single scan. So it's doing a scan right now for the entire range 25 megahertz to 6 gigahertz now let me set it to continuous i'm going to power on the analog transmitter first this analog transmitter will be transmitting at 5945 megahertz yep you can see a spike right there and if you click on it, there is a marker. Okay, here we go. With the cursor position here, you can see that the frequency is 5952. I'm not aiming really precisely. Let me try to aim it more accurately. It's 5948. So 5948 is the frequency of the analog transmitter in the spectrum analyzer plot and we know that we have set the frequency on that video transmitter to transmit at 5945 so that's pretty close so I'm going to power on the byte frost right now the same distance with the other antennas And you can see that on the software, there's a lot of noise coming in. Here's how much noise flow there is when you power up something like the bite frost. And basically, this is the signal of the bite frost HD transmitter. I'm on channel 3, which I believe is about 5726. So let me do a stop. I complete this sweep and then we can check out the cursor yep so it's 5727 to 5746 so as compared to the analog signal which is still there you can see that the HD video transmitter system of the Bifrost creates a lot of harmonics and noise all the way from the left side to the right and even at the center frequency it's covering about 20 megahertz of bandwidth so the next step is to power on the DJI HD system let me go ahead and do that and let me set it to continuous scan again Now you can see there's another peak here. That's the DJI. So you have the analog, the DJI and the bite frost. So if you look at this sweep, you notice that the DJI, although it's 700 mini watts, the amplitude is less than that of the bite frost. Over here we have the circular antenna and on the DJI we are using linear antennas so there's a 3 dB attenuation although this is a higher power transmitter as compared to the bite frost transmitter so let me power off the bite frost and the analog and just take a look at the DJI only So the DJI is pretty clean as you can see as compared to Bite Frost. We have a lower noise floor and a center, very defined center frequency here. 
and if we click on the cursor we could see that it's 5.84 gigahertz 5840 that's the channel I'm on for the DJI and if I turn the analog transmitter back on run a sweep again and we should see another peak yep so that's the analog spike over there and that's the DJI and the analog has introduced some other spikes here on the left hand side so it's a bit noisy but not as bad as the bite frost now I'm going to power on the bite frost here and the moment I do that you could see a lot of noise going on yep it takes a while to settle and now you can see massive noise so the bite frost VTX is really noisy with this chip 60Hz spectrum analyzer I could scan and do sweeps for frequency between 5 GHz to 6 GHz which I was not able to do so in the past there's also a catch why this spectrum analyzer is a lot cheaper than the NWT6000 um, if you remember the signal generator here basically this one here the signal generator could only operate when the spectrum analyzer is not operating so the signal generating function would be here on the software I go to VFO variable frequency oscillator and right now it is in the signal generator mode and once you're in this mode you could set the frequency that you want to generate for example I could set it to 5800 yep and then I could set EFO to memory to store it and it will take effect almost immediately there you go so if you want to do SWR return loss measurement where you need the signal generator and the spectrum analyzer both to work at the same time you really need to go for the more expensive NWT6000 that's all I have for this video, I hope you find the information useful. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.